Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. On today's episode, we're going to talk about comfrey and its use in organic gardening. Comfrey is native to Europe and grows mostly in moist areas like river valleys. Comfrey is used for two common purposes in organic gardening. The first is as an organic fertilizer and the second as a mineral accumulator. I was first introduced to comfrey when a viewer gave me a plant. Comfrey is relatively easy to plant. Simply plant the tuber, cover it with soil, and it's likely to grow. If you have extra tubers or you're removing tubers from an area and you don't want them anymore, it's very important to make sure you dispose of them correctly because they can reroot pretty well anywhere and grow in unintended locations. It's a good idea to remove the stem and the flower. The flower will produce seeds that can germinate and become other plants and the actual stem of the flower can also take root just like the tubers do producing a new plant. Now there are sterile varieties. The Bocking 14 Russian Comfrey is sterile, so all you really have to worry about is the tubers creating new plants, and that should be a little easier to manage. I planted my Comfrey soon after receiving it. I put it in the same area that I make leaf mold in. The reason I put it in that area is as the leaf mold breaks down, it'll release nutrients like nitrogen into the surrounding soil, feeding my Comfrey plant. It's also in a location that is out of the way and will not shade any of my food producing crops. In order to understand comfrey as an organic fertilizer and as a mineral accumulator, I sent in a couple of samples to Maxima Analytics for analysis. After harvesting the last set of leaves in the fall, I dried them and sent them into the lab for analysis. We selected to have a couple of tests run, the immediately available NPK and trace elements. The immediately available NPK of comfrey was 0.35, 0.73, and 7.35. These results only account for the NPK that is immediately available to your plants. They do not take into account the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium that are locked up and bound in larger molecules. These larger molecules do require time to actually break down in order to enter the nutrient cycle. In order to get the total NPK, we have to turn to the University of Minnesota, who did an elemental analysis capturing the total percent by weight of nitrogen within comfrey samples. They did three samples, and the results ranged between 3.36 and 3.7%. Our lab results had the total available and unavailable phosphorus and potassium results of 5,300 and 70,000 respectively. Once you convert to the molecular weight and the percent for milligrams per kilogram, you end up with an NPK of 3.7, 1.21, and 8.4. Comfrey turns out to have a great both immediately available NPK and long-term NPK. So the second test that we did was to assess whether or not comfrey was a good mineral accumulator that allows you to add trace elements to your garden soil. Plants require a number of elements in the soil to produce healthy crops for you. These elements are broken into two categories, the essential elements and the beneficial elements. It is rare for soils to be completely devoid of these essential trace elements. However, lower levels of one can impede the nutrient cycle. Comfrey contains boron, significant volumes of calcium, iron, magnesium, sodium, and sulfur. Additional elements were reported, however, due to their low levels and the detection limit error rate, the reported numbers are not reliable, however, they are still present. These include manganese, molybdenum, nickel, and zinc, and other literature sources found cobalt and copper. Once you add the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, this accounts for 15 of the 18 essential and beneficial elements. All that's missing is silicon, selenium, and chlorine. Silicon and chlorine were not tested in this analysis as they are abundant and well distributed in the Earth's crust. Selenium was below the detection limit, however it's an essential part of a number of amino acids so it's likely already in the soil. So not only does comfrey have a good immediately available but long-term NPK, it has what I would consider a full complement of trace elements that are both beneficial and essential for healthy plant growth and production. I've been using the comfrey leaves in my garden in a number of different ways. First and foremost, as a part of my mulch layer. Simply 
Lay the cut leaves down on the surface with other free and local resources like fall leaves, wood chips, and used coffee grounds. If you'd like it to break down a little faster, you can add it to a hot compost. Comfrey is considered a green material as it's high in nitrogen. When combined with a carbon-rich material, like fall leaves, it will break down through what's known as thermal compost. Other application techniques of comfrey involve blending it up with some water, using them as a compost material in an actively aerated compost tea, or the creation of a fermented extract. These lab results and peer-reviewed literature have shown these local and free resources are a great way to not only build your soil, but feed your plants. I'd like to send a special thanks to Maxim Analytics for not only helping us run these samples, but analyzing them as well. Thank you very much for spending time with me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you.